morning, y'all. Good morning. Uh, if y'all would stand with us and let's begin praise. Y'all bear with me. I'm getting over being sick, so y'all sing loud. <laughs>
that Christ would be glorified in everything that we do. We thank you, Father, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
good morning. Good morning. Proud you all did get out today, even on this cold day. And with many people that have got COVID and the flu, yeah. it is very concerning. Uh, Sharon made me go Friday, and I got a, the advanced COVID shot in my left arm and the flu shot in the right arm. So I should be okay now, all right? Uh, the word I want to say is thankful. Thankful. We're about to get into the Thanksgiving season. We need to be thankful for all we have. People have said, is it hard to get in front of all of you and say things like I say? And I say, when I look at y'all's faces and the shine of Jesus Christ coming right back at me, it is a warming feeling in my heart. A warming feeling. So I am very thankful for you. Okay? Uh, I'm very thankful for my minister. I'm very thankful we've got a nice church that is dry and warm to be in to worship God. And that's what we're here to do, is to worship God. But I'm grateful, thankful for Jesus Christ. Jesus who came and taught us about communion. It was a time when he was very, very troubled. I, I, I just can't imagine that he knew he was about to die on the cross for all of us. And uh, he had to have a lot going on in his mind at that time. It just had to be. But he wanted to carry this out and he wanted us to remember him through communion each and every Sunday. If you'll bow in prayer with me. Most Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your great plan. The plan that you had for Jesus from the very beginning. And through till he found himself on the cross dying for us. We thank you for communion. And we ask the Holy Spirit to be among us and me among it, to bless us in the way that it is meant to bless us. We pray this through Jesus, and we say, Amen. <laughs> As I said, on that night, as he was teaching his uh, disciples, he's about to go to the cross, and he's teaching us in the future, until he comes again, that he was about to go to the cross. He broke the bread, and he blessed it, and he said, eat this, this represents my body, which will be broken for you. And then after the meal, he poured the wine, and he blessed it. And he says, drink this. This represents my blood, which will be shed for you to wash away your sins. Most. 
Most Heavenly Father, we come to you in great thankfulness. We are thankful for everything you have given us, which is everything we've got, including this building, including the, the lives of the members uh, that we have here. We thank you for each and every one of them. May we receive from you what you want us to receive at the times that are most appropriate. We pray this through Jesus and we say, Amen. Thank you, sister. To be small and never, y'all sound great this morning. <laughs>
Well, there's no doubt uh, that this is one of the uh, one of the great times of the year for believers to uh, you know to give thanks for what He's done. Um, I do tend to think that uh, there are different uh, different uh, areas of our life that we give thanks for. Um, I think that probably. Um, the least of them would be the temporal things in our life, um, the temporal things. The next level, in my mind, and you, can, you may think of it a little different than I do, but in, in my mind, and then there's another level that seems to be a little higher, seems to be a little more important, and that's the people in our lives. Uh, and then the third level in my mind would be, um, would be God, it would be the Lord Jesus, uh, in terms of uh, his uh, commitment to me and his offering uh, for uh, me and for you. Um, here in Mark 15, the reason why I stayed here is because um, instead of going to some passages like Psalm 103 or 107 or, you know, just a lot of different, 102, just different passages that really deal with gratitude to God. Um, the reason why is because we, we are, we're observing here the very, humbling, the very humbling thing that Christ did. I'm, I'm humbled by this. Um, uh, it's very sobering. I don't know that I could... Uh, I don't know that I could use strong enough language for this. Uh, anytime we talk about God, uh, you know, it's, it's, the language isn't strong enough. We don't have words that reach to, you know, his, his greatness. We just don't have, they don't exist. Uh, when we talk about holiness, uh, obviously that's an incredible word, but but to understand that word or to talk about God's mercy, uh, that's a marvelous word. And we all have an idea of what that means, but it's just so profound that it's hard to describe. But this morning, I want us to look at this and we're going to see two things, at least. Well, one is we're going to see what man's potential is, um, what man's potential for evil is, now watch this, even in the midst of religion, just think about this with me for a minute, even in the midst of religion, how evil man can be. And the second part is, when you're looking at the one who exudes righteousness, <laughs> he just, I mean, everything about him is holy. He just exudes this. It's a it's, uh, it's, it's something that is so amazing. For example, uh, there are six trials that Jesus went through from approximately 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. He went through six trials. He was, at, he was, uh, with, he was with, uh, the, uh, the first person was, he went to Annas, which was one of the, one of the high priests. Then he went to Caiaphas, which is one of the high priests, and what that what happened there, Annas is actually the the father-in-law of Caiaphas, and apparently um, uh, the uh, the government put Annas in the place to be the uh, high priest, and they kind of deposed Caiaphas, but the people still recognized Caiaphas, the religious people did, and so he went to uh, he was taken before. Annas, and then he was taken to Caiaphas, and then he was taken to the Sanhedrin, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the, the committee, I guess. And then he went before Pilate, and then he went before Herod, and then he went before Pilate again. You know what's interesting? Is that the three religious, the three religious uh, trials that he had, they found him guilty. The three civil trials that he had with Pilate to Herod to back to Pilate, they found him innocent. Uh, so uh, let's just notice, beginning in verse 1. 
Immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a, consult, uh, a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you? But Jesus still answered nothing. Ah, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them. And whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas. Who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done to them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate wanted to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Let's pray together again. Father, I consider it a privilege to speak to this church. I know there are some that are listening uh, uh, by Facebook. I thank you for them as well. I thank you for these that are here. And I pray that the time that we spend looking at your word would be done in such a way that your Holy Spirit has freedom to be our teacher. That we would not quench or keep him in any way by our uh, thoughts uh, away from us. Lord, be honored in every word, be honored in every thought, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Don't you guys find it rather interesting that they are, uh, they are wanting Barabbas to be freed, who was a murderer, and then wanting Jesus, who came to give life to death? Isn't that the... Isn't that just amazingly ironic? Isn't that just surprising to you? Uh, that, that the, it wasn't, I mean, remember Pilate was wanting to let the guy go. He wanted to give him an opportunity to let him go. But they, uh, the, 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 the chief priest stirred up the people, stirred them up, crucify him, right? Uh, we want Barabbas. He, they stirred them up. Isn't that interesting how people can stir up others to, to go in a direction that's not even the right direction? But it's also interesting, Barabbas' name, I think. <clears throat> Barabbas, if you find, you find this in different places, for example, in the, uh, in the scriptures, um, uh, there's a guy by the name Bar-Jesus in, in the book of Acts, which means son. Um, that, that person was not a believer, by the way. But, but, but son of, Bar means son. And, uh, you guys know Abbas or Abba. Many of you know what Abba means, so he is the... Uh, uh, son of the Father is what that means. And if you look over in Matthew, what is really interesting is that in some translations, his first, that was his last name, by the way, his first name was actually Jesus. 
Now, uh, now that's many, many, many uh, transcripts uh, 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 show that his name was Jesus, and Matthew actually refers to that. But so think about that. They, um, who Jesus is really the uh, the son of the Father, uh, but he was known as the son of the Father. In other words, Bar Jesus or Jesus Bar G, uh, Jesus uh, Barabbas, right? Because Abba means Papa or Father. Interesting. It's all really kind of cool to look at, but it's so ironic. And it's really, it's really one of those things that just humbles us. I mean, uh, that, 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 that we, that we were part in Jesus going to the cross. We were a very real part in Jesus going to the cross. You understand that? Why did he go there? Because you see, you stop and think about um, why Jesus came with me for a minute. I'm not going to be long this morning. I'm just going to enjoy talking about this stuff. Um, but why did, why did Jesus come? We find in the scriptures why he came. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to, uh, are you ready? He came to uh, take my penalty and he came to take your penalty. Not only that, but he came to take away the, the power of sin in our lives. Romans chapter 6, the power of sin so that sin doesn't have to reign over us. See, thirdly, uh, in, that, in that sense, he took away the, the penalty and the power. And then one day, I don't know about you guys, we find this in, a, in the book of Ephesians uh, in the second chapter, but he came to, to uh, take away uh, the one day the presence of sin. I don't know about you guys, man, but sometimes that stuff's a weight, man. It's just a weight. Sometimes, um, and, and, and the things that I start off my morning and I end my day and I go through my day and Lord, help me to think right about this and Lord, forgive me for thinking like this and Lord, please forgive me for pride. And, and I just have to, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Now, you might think, well, wow, Don, are you not happy here now? I'm, I'm thrilled during the day because he instantly cleanses me. If, anything, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to, you know, uh, cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And I love that. And I, I enjoy that in my Christian walk. I don't have to walk in guilt. I can get rid of things very, very quickly. And so, uh, but why else did he come? We, we, he, he says these things. He makes it real clear about why he came. He came so that, um, uh, he came to bear witness to the truth. He came to, uh, uh, to, as I said, to seek and to save those that are lost. He came to, uh, uh, to uh, save us from our sin. Well, I want you to notice here, this is very interesting. If you bring up, well, that first point for us, if you don't care. Um, if you'll bring up that first point for me, I appreciate that, Brant, which is simply this. Uh, God seems to become silent when the pearls are no longer valued. It's really interesting, isn't it? Where, where Jesus became silent. You can go to Luke 20, for example. And uh, Jesus, the, the, the uh, Pharisees came to confront Jesus. And it's very humbling to, to think, think that they came to confront the Son of God. But what happened was is that they said, um, they said, we want to ask you this question. By what authority do you do this stuff? And he said, well, let me ask you guys a question. John the Baptist, was he from heaven or was he from man? And they began to uh, talk amongst themselves. They said, well, if we say that he's from heaven, then we should be listening to him. Well, if we say that he's from man, this is what they said, the people will stone us because they think that he was a prophet. And this is what they said. We don't know. And so Jesus said, well then, nor am I going to tell you by what authority I do these things. Isn't that interesting? It's when you and I be on, are honest, are honest about things. When we, when, we, when we go ahead and answer the questions, be real about what the questions are. 
In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6, it says this. Matthew 7 and verse 6 says, are you ready? Um, Do not give what is holy to the dogs. Watch this. Nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and fear you and tear you into pieces. What does that what does that mean? Don't cast your pearls before swine. Well, it means this. I think that that's what Jesus was doing here. Let me explain. In other words, the reason why he didn't answer one, it's a fulfillment of Isaiah 53, that that Christ um, uh, Christ uh, did not did not respond to them. He was silent before them as a sheep before the slaughter. Okay? That's an Isaiah 50. The prophesy is going to do that. But why did he do that here? I think that it's, the reason is because he had talked to them and he had talked to them and he had talked to them and they just didn't value what he had to say anyway. And so you come to that place where, where sometimes you're saying things and, and, and nobody's picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> They're not picking it up anymore. And, and so it's just a matter, there's no reason to keep throwing uh, this truth. Why? Because they don't value the truth. They don't value it. And so there's no reason to continue the discussion. You see, another example of that was in John chapter 8, where um, they, these guys uh, brought a girl who had been caught in adultery. They came and threw him at his feet. And, uh, and he didn't say anything. And he just began to write on the ground. And he just said, uh, you know, he that's without sin cast the first stone. And they began to drop their stones from the oldest to the youngest, see. You know, the older we get, the more we've sinned, by the way. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but the older we get, the more we've sinned. Okay. Uh, and so the oldest to the youngest. But here's what's interesting is that Jesus says, where are your accusers? Uh, Well, they're not here. He says, well, neither do I condemn you. He was talking to this girl. Uh, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. See, it wasn't a matter of, uh, uh, nor do I condemn you. Go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. But he said, I don't want you to sin anymore. You see? And so it's really beautiful. And so so what we have here is that Jesus demonstrates over and over again this very idea of, uh, of not uh, throwing your those pearls, those pearls of truth before people that just don't value it. Let me read another passage real quick. I'm just going to read. Um, it's in Proverbs the uh, chapter 1 and verse, oh, I think it's just verse 24. Let me look at it real quick. Uh, Proverbs 1, yeah, well, Proverbs 1, 24 says, Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Um, because you disdained all my counsel and would have, have, and would have none of my rebuke. And verse 28 says, Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Well, why is that? Because I kept talking and I kept calling. I kept calling out to you and you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. And so he just says, oh, well, when you call to me, nor will I respond to you. You see? Um, you know, isn't it interesting as we look at these people, and I want to get to the second point, my final point, but it isn't it interesting how that these people, um, how how sinful they uh, they've shown themselves to be. Why? Because a week before they were praising him, they were throwing down these palm branches, they were throwing down their clothes, you see, and uh, and then now all of a sudden they're yelling, "Crucify him!" It's really really surprising. People generally generally are fickle, right? In other words, uh, you know, they're caught up in the emotion of the moment. The emotions just sort of drive them rather than truth, okay? Um, well, let me move on. Um, number two, if you'll bring that up for me, uh, for me, if you would, Brent. I want you to look 
uh, here again. I, just want, I think it's verse 6, if I'm not mistaken, here in chapter 15. Uh, and it says this. Um, let's see. Nope, it's not verse 6. It's, it's verse 10. It says, For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because... Of envy. You know that sometimes it's easy to tell people's motives. Ah, we can't always tell, right? We can't always tell what somebody's motives are. But sometimes it's pretty easy, especially when the emotions are high. When they're high. And they're uncontrolled, right? When they're high, you can tell what somebody's motive is. Just kind of listen for a little bit. Well, um, that's what was going on here. Uh, Pilate, who was not a religious man particularly, um, he... Uh, uh, knew. Doesn't it say that he knew? It says in verse 10, it says, uh, for he knew, he knew the reason why the chief priests were handing him over was because of envy. See? And I think it's really good for you and I and everything that we do, stop and evaluate, uh, we stop and evaluate our, uh, our, our motives for things. Stop and, and, and allow the Word of God to, to reveal our motives. Stop and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal our motives. And guys, listen, the Holy Spirit never works against the Scriptures. It's always going to work in conjunction with the Scriptures. We learn so much more when we're looking at the Scriptures and allowing God to teach us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Scriptures, what, what they do for us, is that they, they, they're a discoverer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Because God always knows what's going on in our heart. And, and, and sometimes people around us can know the very same thing. Um, and so man has an ability, even in his religion, to deceive himself and others. Why? Because the heart is just naturally corrupted. I don't know about you, but, but I have to put in check all the time my heart. Um, when somebody says something to me, I got to tell you, I have to stop and look. I don't, uh, I, I don't just discount anything people say, but I've got to stop and look. If they say, hey, Don, you know, looks like you're doing this because of this. Or, or they'll say, you know, whatever they might say to me. Why? And so it's good for me to stop and evaluate that because God does care about the motives. He does care about why you give. He does care about why you sing. He does care about why you, uh, why you said something kind to somebody. He does care about all these things. See? He's always looking at the heart. See? He's always trying to build and strengthen our heart. Uh, Jeremiah 17 says that um, cursed is the man who trusts in man. You know what? You know what the center of the Bible says. You guys know what? You guys know what the center of the Bible? Um, in the uh, and it's actually the center of the Bible is Psalm 118 verses 8 and 9. It says, uh, you know, uh, blessed is the man who uh, doesn't trust in man. He doesn't trust in man, nor does he trust in princes or or government. You see, you don't, you know, but, but trust in the Lord. That's what it says in Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9. And so that's, that's where we find blessing is not trusting in man in any form. But Hebrews 17 says, curses a man who trusts in man. Why? Because, the, because his heart is deceitful above all, desperately wicked, and who can know it? Now, now look at this. I mean, you see, Jerusalem was the center of religion. And, and, and here it was, the center of religion was crucifying God. They didn't know who he was. And they didn't, they didn't want him. Whoever he was, they didn't want him. You know what the scripture says uh, in both Psalm 14 and uh, Romans 3? Uh, Romans 3 excuse me, comes from Psalm 14. It says that no one does good, no, not one. Oh, I'm there. I got you right. And then it goes on and says, nobody seeks after God. What? 
What? What do you mean nobody seeks after God? Look who, look at us here in this room. That's what it says. Nobody seeks after God. Do you believe that? I believe that. You say, Don, I'll look at all these religions all over the world. Well, here's what it amounts to, is that there are a lot of people who desire the blessings of God, but do they want God? Do they want Him? In fact, it says it really clear in the Scriptures. For example, in John... Uh, in the book of John, chapter 6, and verse 44, and I think it's verse 63, it says, it says, nobody comes to me unless the Father draws him. Don't, don't mistake that God did not have an incredible activity in your life to bring you to him. Don't think that somehow you were smart enough or you were better. Than, no, 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 don't even go there. Don't even pretend to you that. This whole thing is about grace. This whole thing is about grace. And so we, what we find is, is that one of these days we're going we're gonna to get to heaven, because, not because of anything that we've done, nothing. He started the work and he finished it in his presence. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful thing. And so, so do I believe that nobody seeks after God? Absolutely. Because men love darkness, they love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. You lead man to himself, and there's no way he's going toward God. Oh yeah, he might want the gifts of God, he might want the blessings of God, and he might want, you know, he might say he might want heaven, but 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 is it God that he wants? Is it him? Ladies and gentlemen, there is a relationship that's that's waiting on us every single day. A relationship. It's, it's called in the Bible the gospel of God. It's the gospel of God. And Christ is the one who came to bring us to God. Christ came to bring us to God. And so I don't want you, I don't want you to mistake that. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me do it this way. I'm going to read a passage to you. And man, I'm doing fantastic on time. Uh, I just am because I'm going to finish when I get finished. Ephesians, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Man, it's such a good passage, man. It's such a rich passage. Golly. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read this to you. And I want you to see that man in himself has got major problems that he cannot fix by himself. He cannot Fix it by himself. I'm just going to read the first five verses of Ephesians 2. Many of you think, well, I'll go to 8 and 9. No, not going to do it. Don't even need to. i got to get a drink of water. And then I want to, mm. I mean, look at the condition of man. Chapter 2, verse 1. It says this. And, and you he made alive. You know what the scripture says in John chapter 3? You must be born again. Well, this is the same thing. He said, you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, there it is, man. You ought to underline it. You ought to circle it. You ought to, you ought to you, you know, highlight it. Uh, but God, it says, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you've been saved. You see, man has so many things going against him. He's dead in, in relationship to God, and that death is, in, is, is, is trapped by sin. But not only that, but Satan has some kind of working going on in that person's life too. Got a lot of problems. But God, but God, you see, and all of a sudden, God comes into the picture, and uh, he comes into this picture, and, 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 and he makes us alive. He makes us alive. You see? Uh, and so in this passage, I want you to see something. That these men, they were mostly men, 
These men, in their religion, crucified, sought to crucify Christ. Is that, I gotta tell you, this is just, this is just mind boggling. Do you understand that that shows that the potential for you and I to do the same thing without God? Without Him, there is no limit to what we can do but God. But God. And I hope, I hope this morning that, that you could say in your life, but God, but God, but God intervened into my life. And then we, 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 we go to this place where all of a sudden we, we find ourselves uh, in this place where we're like the apostle in 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and verse 31. He says that, that, that he says, whatever you do, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Why would I not do that? Because, but God came into my life. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God whether you eat or drink. <laughs> do all to his glory. And we say these things because, because the, the, the psalmist knew, the psalmist knew in Psalm 19 and in Psalm 139, he says, search my heart, O God, and see if there's anything evil in me. And lead me in the way everlasting, God. God, uh, may everything I do bring glory to your name. God, may every thought that I have be pleasing in your sight. You see, that's what the gospel does, is it changes a man. It changes And I want him to radically change my life. Let's pray. Father, Christ went through these six trials. Six trials. <laughs> It's amazing. Thank you, Father, that you sent your Son to seek and to save the lost. Mm. Wow. Father, may we walk out of here with a sense of humility, with a sense of, of, of just the shock that we see here, these incredible, incredible, Father, I pray that you'll help us to be like Christ. You'll help us to be like him. He came to serve and not to be served. Father, we need you. I thank you for this church. We want more than anything else for Christ to be glorified and no one else. No one else. We want people far and wide to think about Christ as their Savior, as the one who delivered them, as the one who came to have fellowship with us. And then we pursue Him. Thank you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed and I know there's not a, a lot of people here, but if God has spoken to you, I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to ask you to come. and Perhaps you want to pray by yourself or you want to pray with myself. You say, hey, Don, I want to make this my church home. Or whatever it is, you come. Would you stand with us, please? Would you stand with us right now? We're going to sing together. Oh